The Chosen is now a three-season show. And did you know that in season four, they're requiring $3 million for every single episode? Obviously, The Chosen has become a major phenomenon within the Christian realm. And in Christian media, there is nothing that surpasses it, at least in my opinion. It has reached nearly half a billion, with a B, people. That's insane. And I believe that it's sure to reach its goal of reaching a billion people by the end of the series. Over the last two years, the show has won award after award and honestly just kept on getting better season after season. But while The Chosen is the first multi-season show about the life of Jesus, it is not the first show about the life of Jesus. And as we've seen, there have been many other shows throughout the past that have done okay but they've never lived up to what The Chosen is doing now. Specifically, I'm thinking of a show called The Bible, a one season show about a lot of the Old Testament into the life of Christ and beyond. And this was a major, major series that came out in 2013. So if you were a Christian during that time, I am sure that you've seen at least one or two episodes. This series begins truly at the beginning of time, at the beginning of the Bible, and goes through a bunch of the Old Testament pillar stories that we know. And then at episode seven, we see the beginning of Jesus's earthly ministry, as then he is crucified and so on. But there are a lot of parallels that we can draw in between The Chosen and this show. So let's look at why. Why did this show not succeed? What was wrong with it? And what were the things that The Chosen did correctly that allowed it to succeed further than this show ever could? And you have to understand, this show was not a flop. People loved this series. And of course, at the very beginning, it was one of the most massive series ever on television, period, even outside of the Christian realm. The first episode of this series had 13.1 million people watching it. That is a big number. But luckily for us, this show obviously talks about some of the same stories that The Chosen has done in the past or is doing now. And in the future, there may be even more scenes that we may be able to parallel and talk about why other Christian productions aren't doing as well. But for today, let's talk about the healing of the paralytic, since we have both of those scenes in The Chosen and the Bible series. So let's go through both of these scenes little by little to see how each of them compares to the other. How shall we picture the kingdom of God? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Cannot be hid. And if it were nighttime, Zebedee wouldn't light his lamp and put it under a basket. He'd put it on the stand where he could light us all. Starting off, we can actually see that these scenes are starting in a similar place. Jesus is talking to a crowd of people and he's speaking of a parable. So in the Bible series, he's talking about the parable of the mustard seed and in the chosen, he's speaking of the parable of the lamp on a stand. But then pretty quickly into his teaching, he's interrupted by a man that is lowered through this roof. And this brings us to our first problem with the Bible series that the chosen kind of gets right here. We see that the chosen is building up this moment and it's making it as impactful as possible. Now, one of the major things that I've seen that the Bible series struggles with is that it's too fast when it needs to be slow and it's too slow when it needs to be quick. It's hard to manage the pace that needs to be done within a TV series like this, but the Bible series just misses more often than it hits. The smallest seed in the world. Yet, when planted, it grows up and becomes the biggest of all. What's going on? It becomes a tree. Jesus of Nazareth! Over there! I saw what you did to the leopard on the road this morning. My friend has been paralyzed since childhood. He has no hope but you. Please, do for him what you did for the leper. If you are willing, Rabbi, I know you can do this. Down. And we can see a major difference in the reactions of the people, of Jesus' disciples especially, when they see this man is being dropped through the roof. This is not a normal thing that would have happened during this time. They broke open the roof and let this person through. So of course the proper reaction would be like, 
What are you doing? Put that back, like we see in The Chosen. But in the Bible series, all we see is Peter kind of being like, hmm, what's happening here? In The Chosen, we are experiencing this moment from everybody's point of view. It cuts from Jesus to Tamar, to the Pharisees, to Matthew, to Peter. Everybody is all in on what's happening here. And it's a culmination of the experience altogether. But in the Bible series, all we see is Peter kind of shortly react to this person coming through the roof, and then he carries him over to Jesus, and no one is surprised that this is happening. There is no spectacle. We're not involved in this moment. We're just kind of observing what's going on. And I have to talk about the music here as well. In The Chosen, there's this massive soundtrack that's just building up and building up to this climax that we're about to see. It builds up the enormity of the moment, making you feel the pressure and the, the heaviness of what's about to happen. While in the Bible series, nobody is reacting acting so we can't really get a good grasp on what's happening here until one of the pharisees steps in a little bit later but we'll talk about that in a second as we continue on in the bible series we see as peter brings in this paralytic in front of jesus and everybody starts to murmur a little bit and without any additional dialogue or explanation jesus just bends down and begins healing this man Sins are forgiven, my son. But there's nothing else to kind of build it up here. Let's look at the chosen and see how it's done there. You, by whose authority do you teach? Answer me. If you are willing, Rabbi, you know you can't. Hey, I'm talking to you. By whom do you teach? Certainly not the authority of any rabbi from Nazareth. Where did you study? Your faith is beautiful. Son, take heart. Your sins are forgiven. First off, in The Chosen, we see that we are building other storylines. We see as Matthew and the children appear, and Simon has an interaction with him, which we know is going to be a contentious thing, as this is his tax collector. There's a lot of things that are building up. Simon has a quick moment with Mary, and then we shoot back to Tamar and them lowering him down. Everything is layered here. It's not just a single moment for that single moment's sake. And then we get a moment where Shmuel comes up, and he enters the conversation. And this changes the tone of absolutely everything in this scene because Shmuel is not just here to antagonize but it changes the whole scene to be Shmuel versus Jesus and this is another point where I think that the chosen just executes way better than the Bible series did in the chosen it's way more biblically accurate Jesus has a conversation with the paralytic and says your sins are forgiven and then the Pharisees don't say anything in the Bible series, the Pharisee speaks up and immediately starts shouting at Jesus and calling him a blasphemer and calling out all these things. Did you hear that? He has forgiven his sins. I thought only God could do that. It's not blasphemy. He knows. It is blasphemy. Is that your wish, my friend? But in scripture, it's very clear. None of these things were said out loud. These were things that the Pharisees were thinking, and Jesus was literally reading their minds and speaking it back to them. Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right. Since we as the audience obviously don't know what the Pharisees are thinking, and we don't have a narrator to tell us that, this is a perfect way to tell us what the Pharisees are thinking at the same time as keeping it biblically based, because Jesus knew their thoughts. And I also love the subtle moment between Shmuel and Yusuf, where they look at each other like, were you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? This is where the Bible series starts to struggle with this pacing issue again. Every time Jesus speaks here, it's like this slow kind of drawn out moment when it should be believable, right? It should be more human. And while there are intense moments in The Chosen, the dialogue always seems a little bit natural, at least more natural than the Bible series for sure. We can see as Jonathan Rumi playing Jesus, he's getting upset about what's happening here and he's kind of showing that emotion more and more. But the Jesus in the Bible series is very monotone. 
Very rarely did he show any sort of emotion, and when he did, it was very muted. So it's kind of hard to relate to a character like that. Tell me which is easier. To say his sins are forgiven. Or say... Get up. And walk. But I ask you, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven. Or rise up and walk. It's easy to say anything, no? But to show you, and so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And then as the man is healed in the Bible series, we see that things are a little bit out of order again. Jesus has all of these dialogue moments in the Bible before the healing begins, and then he heals the paralytic. That's what we see in The Chosen, that's what we see in the Bible, but here it's kind of flip-flopped and it's a little bit different. Not that that's a huge deal, but we can see the little bit of inaccuracies that start to add up. And trust me, there's a lot of inaccuracies in this series. Wait. The Son of Man has authority to forgive sin. So let's jump back over to the Chosen to see the rest of this healing. I say to you, my son, rise. Pick up your bed and go home. We see again as the music helps to build the environment here. We see as the music was huge, it's this anthem-like moment, and then it comes back down quiet for the healing, and then it erupts again in the aftermath of what's happened. There are so many things within these two scenes that I could nitpick and pick apart, and we see so many of them. I think the three main things that I focus on are accuracy of the scripture, it's, it's the humanity of what we see. So do we relate to Christ? Do we relate to these other characters? And how does that make us feel? Do we connect with them after we relate to them? There's a big, big difference between The Chosen and the Bible series, and the reason is because of that connection. It's because of the humanity that The Chosen is able to show. And even though The Chosen is not a direct comparison to the Bible, that's not why we watch it. We don't watch The Chosen to study. We don't watch the Bible series to study it. We watch it for entertainment. We watch it because it's something that we relate to, because it's our life. We are Christians. We love Christ. And we just want to see it on the big screen. We, would, we want to see it on our TV screens. We want to see it in a TV show. And so The Chosen has done that very, very well. This is one of the things that I talk most about when I talk about The Chosen. It's the fact that the writers of the show do not discount your intelligence. They allow things to play out the way that they're going to. And they don't use a narrator or anything else to explain what's happening so that we can spend time to dig into the show and find even more things if we want to, or we can take it at face value and just follow along. But for those of us who have the information, this show is so much more valuable that we can walk through, we can see the scriptures come alive, and we can get those hints that are being dropped every single episode. It's really an amazing experience. And I cannot wait until the rest of the seasons come out. If you like this video, I guarantee you're going to like this one as well. It's all about a new show called Testament that I think has the potential to be as good as The Chosen. See you on the next one. Peace.